In this video, we're going to talk about how to prepare closing journal entries. In previous videos, we've learned how to do basic journal entries or recording transactions. Uh, we've also learned how to do adjusting journal entries, which are year-end adjustments to help us to prepare our financial statements. And we've also learned how to uh, prepare financial statements. So the the final step of this accounting cycle and we've learned most of it the final step is called closing journal entries and I'm just gonna walk through it with you now now beneath this video I've provided a link to uh, the word document that I'm gonna be using to kinda of guide me through the, the uh, example I'm gonna go over today so you can certainly download that and have a look at it um, but basically it represents a company that's kind of come to the end of its fiscal year. So they've done their basic journal entries, they've recorded all the transactions for the year, uh, they've done their year-end adjustments, and now we're staring in the face an adjusted trial balance. So, you know, all their adjustments are done, here's their adjusted trial balance, and they're ready to do financial statements. And in fact, if you scroll down to the next page, you'll see I've already done the financial statements. So we've got our income statement, summarizes the revenues, the expenses, revenues minus expenses of course is net income. We've got our statement of retained earnings which shows how retained earnings changes as a result of net income and dividends. And then we've got our balance sheet which shows that assets equals liabilities plus shareholders equity and sure enough our balance sheet balances 24,000 total assets, 24,000 liabilities and shareholders equity we've got ourselves a good balance sheet. So this company is done. The year is over, the financial statements have issue, been issued, tax returns have been filed, their investors or whomever is, is, needs to look at the financial reports has looked at the financial reports. A closing journal entry is the entry that says the year is over, time to start a new year. And so we've got to think about this and I want you to think about it logically. If I said uh, Joe, I guess this is Joe's travel agency, if I went and talked to Joe and I said, Joe, how much money did you uh, earn in 2012? And it was August 31st, 2012. Joe would look at his net income and say, well, for 2012, I earned $13,500. Now, let's say it was the next day. So August 31st, the next day is September 1st. Uh, September 1st, 2012, I would say, hey, Joe, you know, your fiscal year on August 31st, 2012 is over. How much have you earned so far in the new year? And on September 1st, first thing in the morning before Joe's booked any travel uh, vacations for clients, the first thing in the morning on September 1st, Joe would have to say, well, so far this year, my net income is zero, right? I haven't made any money. You know, up to August 31st, I made 13500 but now we're into a new year, and in my new year, I start counting again from zero. So what the closing entry does then is it resets these revenues and expense accounts back down to zero so Joe can start a new year with zero balances. Now something very interesting though, if I said on uh, first thing in the morning on September 1st, so the day after his fiscal year end, if I said to Joe, how much cash do you have Joe? Joe's cash does not reset to zero and that's something very important to keep in mind. So if we look on the balance sheet, we see Joe's cash is 6000 just because it's a new year, Joe's cash does not reset to zero, nor do his liabilities. He still has to pay back the bank loan. Balance sheet accounts, that's assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity accounts, do not reset. The accounts that do reset, that need to, to be reset to zero, are revenues, expenses, and dividends. Those are the three account classifications that we're going to reset or that we're going to close with our closing journal entry. So to do a closing journal entry is actually rather straightforward. Let's do an example of one now. Uh, I've, I've kind of clicked over to Excel so I can edit a little bit easier and you can see here I've got the adjusted trial balance beside me and I just want to highlight the accounts that I'm going to have to close. I'm going to have to close dividends, I have to close revenues and I have to close expenses. You'll notice I don't close again assets, liabilities 
or the shareholders equity accounts those accounts are called permanent accounts they don't get closed and it, it makes sense right on on September 1st Joe's cash didn't go to zero but on September 1st you've got to say well how much revenue have you earned so far this year Joe and the answer is zero I mean he earned an amount up to August 31st that was the end of his fiscal year September is the start of a new year and on a September 1st at the first thing in the morning Joe's earned nothing so there's no revenues there's no expenses at that first moment of the year it's our job as accountants to reset it's our job to hit the reset button and this closing entry is our way of hitting the reset button now there's a few ways uh, your textbook might show you how to do this I'm gonna show you the way I've done it in practice which doesn't actually match up with every textbook so you might want to be careful here we get the same result at the end but but not every textbook does it the way I do so the first thing I like to do is I like to close my revenue account or accounts. So my revenue account is sitting here and of course it's a credit. I should add headings there of debit and credit. Well, this is a credit of 35,000. I want to make it go to zero. So how do I make a credit of 35,000 go to zero? I debit it. Now I'm breaking a cardinal rule of journal entries here. Normally we say we always credit revenues, we never debit them. Uh, we always debit expenses we never credit them well a closing journal entry is kinda like opposite day we just break all the rules so I know I never debit revenues but if I want to make a revenue zero I gotta debit it so let's debit ticketing revenue oh and I gotta date it and the date will be the last day of the year it's the last journal entry of the year August 31st 2012 and I'm gonna debit ticketing revenue for uh, thirty-five thousand dollars. Okay, so I've made my ticketing revenue go to zero. I'd also like to make all of these expenses go to zero. Now all the expenses are sitting there in their nice debit balances to make them go to zero. I'm gonna have to credit them. So let's credit all of our expenses and make them go to zero. So I'm gonna credit my office supplies expense I'm going to use lots of abbreviations here. Credit office supplies expense for uh, 200 bucks. Just remind myself that this is the column for debits and this is the column for credits. Uh, I'm going to credit telephone expense for 800. I'm going to credit amortization expense. I'm going to really shorthand this to make it fit uh, for 1500. I'm going to credit rent expense for 4000. And I'm also going to credit salaries expense for 15000. Now we're done. We've zeroed our uh, revenues. We've zeroed our expenses. I'll deal with dividends a little bit later. I'm going to deal with dividends in their own entry. But right now I want to do an entry that zeroes my revenues and expenses. And you'll notice something. My journal entry doesn't go to zero. I've got 35,000 worth of debits. And let's see, I've got 15, 19, 20, 21. I got $21,500 worth of credits. 35,000 in debits and 21,500 worth of credits. In other words, to make this thing balance, I need a credit of 13,500. I'll scroll down because I know my beautiful face is going to be in the way there. So to make this balance, I need a credit of 13,500. That's like the missing number. And I'm just filling in the blank here. For right now, uh, this is where I differ from a lot of textbooks. A lot of textbooks at this point will tell you put that credit to a new account called Income Summary. I'm going to tell you uh, rather than going to Income Summary, I'd like you to credit retained earnings. I'll explain why in a minute and I'll explain why textbooks do it an another way. But I, I credit retained earnings. Uh, it saves us an extra step that I, I think is unnecessary. So anyway, we've cleared our, our ticketing revenue and our expenses we've made them all zero and we've adjusted through retained earnings again I'll explain why we adjust through retained earnings in a moment let's make our dividends zero now so our dividends were a debit of 7500 I'll just scroll down here give myself a little room I want to make 
dividends uh, go to zero. So if they were a debit of seventy five hundred, I got to credit them seventy five hundred. And uh, just as I did before, if I want to balance this entry, because there's no other piece of this, uh, I've got to balance it somehow. I'm going to debit retained earnings, just the amount that makes it balance. Oh, my writing just uh, gets worse every video, I think. All right, so I've cleared my, reta my dividends to retained earnings, and I should date this as well. It's uh, August 31st. Okay, so let me zoom out a little bit. I know it's a little bit small on the left, but I think we can read the entry. You can see I've cleared my uh, revenues, expenses to retained earnings, and I've also cleared my dividends to retained earnings. You could do this all in one step if you'd like. That would be fine. I want you to notice the amount that I cleared to retained earnings. When I did my revenues and expenses, I cleared 13500 credit to retained earnings. And when I cleared my dividends, it was 7500 to retained earnings. Now, I want to explain why we do this closing entry and why it works the way it does. So the main reason we do it is we want to reset. We want to start a new year at zero, as I've said. But the other issue is let's take a look at our financial statements. We've got our income statement, our statement of retained earnings, and our balance sheet. I want to hone in on the statement of retained earnings. On this statement of retained earnings, we say, well, here's what our retained earnings begins at. It goes up as a result of net income and down as a result of any dividends that might have happened. And if we had a net loss, it would go down as a result of the net loss. But we had net income here. So our retained earnings goes up by 13500 because of the net income of the company. Well, what are we doing in this journal entry? We're making our retained earnings go up by 13500 because of the revenues and expenses of the company. You can see the first journal entry is all about revenues and expenses, making revenues and expenses zero through retained earnings. And now we're capturing what we had said in our statement of retained earnings. We said retained earnings has got to go up because of the net income of the company. The net income was 13500 Retained earnings has got to go up by 13500 And now we've done a journal entry to make it so. We've done a journal entry to make it happen. Looking further on our statement of retained earnings, we can see we said retained earnings is going to go down by 7500 and that's as a result of the dividends. Well, sure enough, we debit retained earnings. And remember, debit makes shareholders' equity go down. We debit retained earnings by 7500 as a result of the dividends. Now, what you'll find in some textbooks is right here, and let me get my pen tool back. Instead of retained earnings, they'll often credit an account called income summary. And then they'll go from income summary to retained earnings. In my mind and in my heart, I don't think you need that intermediate step. I don't demand it of my students, but your instructor may want to follow the textbook to the letter. And if they do, you're going to have to have that extra little step of dealing with an income summary account. Some instructors might just say, do it all in one entry, and that's fine too. But this is the way I do it in my classes, and the reason I like doing it this way is, if I have a financial statement, I can compare and double check my numbers, and it's one of those checks and balances. My credit to retained earnings as a result of revenue and expenses should match my net income figure from my statement of retained earnings. My dividends, debit, should match the dividends on the statement of retained earnings, and they do. My closing entry is complete. I've reset those temporary accounts, that's revenues and expenses and dividends, to zero. This is a good closing entry, and I'm going to close out the video here.